Good evening, America. I'm Scott Binsack, founder of MFA. It's December 27th, 2016. Tonight, I'm going to be discussing several things, including that of there is 1,000% proof that Obama, with several of the Muslim nations and others, planned this attack at the UN on Israel, and Israel will be bringing that forth with the evidence. I'm also going to be discussing that the UN should stop being funded by the United States and it's time for the UN to be dismantled. Third, I will be discussing tonight what's really happening and that Obama has just declared war on Russia in Syria and I'm going to explain in grave detail what that means and what they have done so that you are aware of this. Third, it's time to smash the haters. Under a URL, mfahaters.com, you will be seeing a website pop up very shortly exposing every one of these haters with picture, autobiography, history, criminal records, and the like, including that of some former, uh, a former employee of mine that was fired several months ago who was stealing from my company. Uh, the rainmaker and was exposed she was fired twice i let her back in a second time i will be exposing her entire past and her trail of fraud from massachusetts all the way to florida i'm also going to be exposing a couple clients who jumped ship with her based on false allegations after they under hundreds of public posts praised me and loved their work from rainmaker the hate has gotten out of hand, and now it's my turn. It is my turn, and stay tuned under MFAHaters.com. Obama. Israel has come out today clearly to state that it has 1,000% proof that Obama, through several Muslim nations, including that of Egypt, who made this initial resolution to the UN, planned this to assault Israel, one of our top allies and a, a country we have protected since its inception. It truly goes to show this man's true colors, and he is the Trojan horse of America. It's not the open borders that's part of it. Anything that he's done as his agenda is just showing his colors. However, Obama himself is the Trojan horse that has been right in our own White House for eight years, casting his Muslim radical beliefs on the American people and the world under the guise of a U.S. president. And you're going to see this come to light more and more and more and more over the next 20 some odd days. And then after office, you're really going to see it come to light when many who are in his own team come forward to expose Obama for who he truly is. And you could be looking at serious war crime tribunals brought against Obama, including that with Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State. And thus, why you see Obama going on the offensive now to try to make it very difficult for Donald Trump to move on many of the new resolutions and, 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 and laws that he is looking to do, as well as to tear up. We have been blinded for eight years or even before that, Obama has been personally groomed by the Rothschilds, Bilderberg, Rockefellers, and others, and you're going to see more of this information, i.e., you want to call them the Illuminati, the New World Order, whatever you want to call them. They truly have groomed this man, and he, had, he is American, America's Trojan horse. And he needs to be brought to justice because it is beyond treason. And what he just did with Israel, and what I'm about to tell you what he just did against Russia, will probably blow your mind what they're exactly doing and what he's doing in Syria as we speak against Russia and how it's going to, it is basically declaring war. We're already in a proxy war with Russia in Syria. What he has done is, under the National Defense Authorization Act, uh, signed into law, he has now become 
the let me see the best way I want to put this. He has become the aggressor against Russia, as I have been trying, and many others have been trying to state that it is not Russia as the aggressor, but that of the United States via that of Obama, and Obama is the king, the head of ISIS. No joke, no conspiracy, facts. And what he's just done to Israel is a clear sign of the same. And this is how he, he, he's acting on his way out the door. Well, while he's been here, he's passed many, many laws, many uh, resolutions, to the point that people have not understood it, and now you're going to see all of these things come into play. And one of them that you're going to see exposed is that Washington has just decided to supply ISIS and the other backed groups against Bashar al-Assad with air defense missile systems to shoot down Russian aircraft in Syria. This is an act of war. This, and it will be blamed on the fascist groups on the ground and ISIS when they shoot down Russian aircraft, but when in fact it is Washington. And thus this is what the back end of a proxy war is, but in fact it is being exposed. So as we speak, portable air defense missile systems are being shipped or being prepared to be shipped to the Syrian theater in order to start taking down Russian aircraft. Putin is aware of this. If this takes place, or should say when it takes place, and these groups shoot down one of Russia's aircraft or attempt there too, you will now have World War III. Fact. Because Russia will not sit back where it owns the skies pretty much over a good majority of Syria with its own top missile defense, air defense missile system, the S-400, S-300, S-400, which is one of the best in the world. This is – it also threatens the Russian military forces, the Russian embassy in Syria, the Syrian people themselves, and this is Obama's way of really dragging Putin into a serious war with the United States under the guise of ISIS and or other rebel groups in Syria that we have been backing via the CIA and Saudi Arabia, even Mossad, and that's why it's kind of bizarre what happened, what they did with Israel, but it's really part of his plan because he is anti-Semitic and a bigot and truly, and truly a madman. He is the hidden Trojan horse and has been for America, and half of this country believes this man is in done a good job. No, he's not done a good job. He has blinded you, blindsided you and us, and guess what? He's spending billions and billions of dollars of your tax-paying money to do it. Fact. So, and what I just have said to you is a fact. This National Defense Authorization Act has been signed into law and has been there, and they are now arming ISIS with and these other groups in Syria against Bashar al-Assad because Aleppo just fell. Aleppo is a key part in Russia and Syria and Iranian troops are about to start to basically clean out Syria of the rest of ISIS and with Donald Trump coming on board, I am sure the U.S. military will really this time aid them in doing just that and Russia will be able to trust President Trump to work with them and Turkey and others to rid Syria and even Iraq and other areas of the Middle East of ISIS. Obama is not going to allow that to happen because he wants to break and force Donald Trump's hand against Russia, who he wants to, oh, Trump wants to make Russia an ally, which it should be, which it should be. We should not be at this late in the game in 2016, after the Cold War has been over, in any type of war with Russia or even the thought of a Cold War era returning 
after coming so far between two nations to get us here. However, that's not the end game. The end game is to go to war with Russia and even China if it, it comes down to it. And we'll get into that in a minute. However, um, this is a hostile move against Russia. And Putin will not put up with it. So get ready, America. It's happening. And I can probably say 85, 95 percent that between now and January 20th, you will probably hear of or see or reports of Russian aircraft being fired upon by alleged ISIS and or other groups against Bashar al-Assad, who we have been funding and training and the like for many years now. Turkey has come out and said that it has proof and evidence that America is funding ISIS. Obama is. Turkey's known this, and Turkey shouldn't be saying a fucking thing, because Turkey is just part of the problem, and they have helped ISIS as well, and they've been using ISIS to smuggle oil in the billions of dollars on the black market from Syria, using ISIS, uh, using these, these, these jihadists, to, to smuggle out oil from Syria, of which Putin has lit them up, their tankers lit them up. We have pre previously warned them in their tankers, by the way, with leaflets. Hey, listen, we're coming to bomb you in 15 minutes. Get out of your truck and leave. What? This just goes to show you. Obama's not on our side. Obama is on their side. In other words, he is the head of this. He is the sleeping cell himself within the United States. And if you can't add up 2 plus 2 equals 4, and 4 plus 4 equals 8, and so forth, that everything is proven to this point, this, and he was using Hillary as well as Secretary of State to carry this out, the two of them, along with John Kerry, and you're going to see, and it, sure enough, I reported it before the news did. I reported that you were going to see John Kerry come out and say, and, and with Obama, to make a speech having to do with the UN and Israel, and I guarantee you they're going to state that they want to pass an urgent resolution to make Palestine a state, and thus you're going to now have, again, a triggering of possible, you're into World War III in this sense as well, and Israel will not put up with this. Israel's not a country to f with, just like Russia. But Israel's is beyond Russia. They are not a country to mess around with. They are not a country that will put up with anything, and rightfully so. The truth is coming out. He has, he's never been on our side. I'm telling you, he's the sleeper cell himself. And he surrounded himself with people in office that we could name by the bucket loads who are also part of this sleeper cell, so to speak. He's the head of the snake in the U.S. anyway. And he has taken out anyone from the Pentagon or anyone thereof in the general format or admiral format that has or even come close to just not going again with his agenda, knowing clear well that his agenda is that of something else. He has fired them. He's either imprisoned them. He's falsely accused them. He's gotten rid of them and surrounded himself with his own people, the same mindset. And not just there, but it you know, we can go to Loretta Lynch, we can go to, we name it, we can go name them all. And there's more we don't even know about who are part of his team. And this is, this is real shit, America. This is not, you know, this is not conspiratorial talk. This is a fact. What I'm telling you about arming Syrian offense with, one of the biggest things that we have tried to do and prevent is ISIS and these, these other groups against Bashar al-Assad from getting their hands on air you know, surface-to-air missile systems because it would then endanger the skies over Syria, not just for the United States, but for Russia or anyone else there. But Russia really maintains the skies in Syria and has been winning in Syria against ISIS and others. And then you have false news reports put out by the UN, which needs to be stopped being funded by our country by the billions and billions of dollars, as Trump has said. It is a waste of our money when the UN is made up of countries that are, you know, tons of them are, 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 are Middle Eastern countries 
as well as are not democratic countries as well, and they are part of this problem, including that of Iran. And this is part of this Iran deal that you see that went through that is the worst thing in American history where Obama really started to show his colors as the head of this snake, this cell. And Kerry, he's using Kerry to do it as well as Secretary of State. Anything Kerry does is answered to by, is controlled by Obama or and or said by Obama. Let's make that clear. The same thing went for Hillary Clinton. It's not like Obama didn't know what Hillary Clinton was doing from Benghazi and Libya to, to Syria to anywhere else for that matter. It is all run by Obama. This, and he's outright bold enough to say it and do it and and at, right before everybody's eyes, and that makes me nervous. You want to know why? Because if he's bold enough to do it before everybody's eyes and do it before the world, and he acts like he's not leaving office, even his statement of, you know, I still have 20 days to go, I think we're in for a ride over the next 20 days, not just in this country, but around this country, to something that if this man is crazy enough to do it, if he's crazy enough to do it, and I'm going to say that if he is, I know he has to have been directed to do it because you're seeing his hands, his color shown. However, will he go as far as it's supposed to go? I don't know. But I'll tell you what, if he does, we're in, we're in trouble here. And this is not fear mongering. This is, this is facts. And now all it takes is for one of these surface to air missiles to shoot down a Russian or attack a Russian jet and they find the pieces of it, and it shows American made, and you know what you have? World War III, because Putin will not. And he already knows that this funding through this uh, National Defense Authorization Act is part of this. Putin's own people just came out today and said this, and three of my Russian, we have three Russian uh, underground members in Russia who got us information direct and there's a lot we don't see in this country or even on the internet that is not you have to really dig for it from Russian news and Russian intelligence that you're not seeing uh, and they're making it that way they do not want you to see it uh, it is Washington could have well let's not even go there the point of this is that this plan from the beginning was to get rid of Bashar al-Assad, simple, to them. And at all costs, and they go through this of creating ISIS, which is really just an, a long arm of the Taliban, changed name so that, you know, oh, we got new threat. And then we have ISIL, I-S-I-L, which is the same. Point being, they create this, 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 this terrorist group it has spread like wildfire. It has been funded and backed by us via Saudi Arabia and other channels, and even the UK and the like. Even other countries are involved as well. Because the idea is, like I said, to destabilize the Middle East, which we have done very well, as well as to take Syria, get rid of Bashar al-Assad, put our own president in there, what we call a puppet president, the same thing that we wanted to do in Crimea, and Russia, Putin got wind of it. That's why Putin entered, entered Crimea to begin with. He didn't just decide to invade Crimea and take back and, and protect his, his black fleet and his port. No, he had in pure, clear intelligence that we had spent close to $5 billion with our CIA to oust and disrupt the pre current president of Crimea and put in our own president so that Crimea would be then become and join the UN and thus be right directly on Russia's borders, etc. Point being, we are the ones behind this, and Obama just, I'm telling you, Israel just came out, and Israel's not going to tell the world it has 1,000% proof unless it does, and they're waiting to release it until President Donald Trump takes office. And they even were asked, why are you doing that? They go, it's safest for us in our country to hold this information until that time because Obama is not stable. Obama is dangerous. And for Israel not to want to release that, that should be a key to the world to say, wait a second, we are concerned, but for them to say we have the 1,000% proof that this was orchestrated via Egypt, thus by the United States with Egypt and several other countries to smash Israel. 
That in itself, to me, is a declaration of war by us on Israel, if you want my honest opinion. It is, it is a declaration of just showing, like, whoa, like, it's probably, it's, and it's one of the most dangerous moves I think you've seen in the history of America, uh, just regarding the UN issues and Israel. Uh, this is no joke, because of what it, it stems off and triggers off, and now if you see, if I am correct, and Kerry does come out, and, and they are currently drafting, from what I understand, another UN emergency resolution to take Palestine and turn it into a state before Obama leaves office. If this is done, if this is done and they vote to make Palestine a state, you're talking about terrorists having their own state. And this is nothing against the good Palestine Christian people that are there or Muslim as well. It's a, very, a lot of very good Christians in Palestine who are sort of stuck in the middle of this, this thing between Israel and Palestine. And it is, they are. These are not terrorists. These are not, you know, uh, anti-Semitic people. These are not. These are really good Christians, who 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 live uh, in Palestine, and are really in caught in this. And these are the people, just like in Syria, where you look up the death tolls from Syria to 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 uh, across the all the, every conflict that we've had over the past, you know, ten years here. You're looking at close to six hundred thousand innocent people dead. But they don't care because, as I told you, their main agenda is depopulization, depopulization of the planet to begin with. So if you put all these together, you can see that the big agenda is being shown to the world. People need to awake and pay attention to this and stand up against this because otherwise you're going to be part of the depopulation agenda as well. And if you say it can't happen in the United States, as my show is being from last night is being loaded to YouTube as we speak, I apologize, I did not get a chance to load it. Agenda, the things like Agenda 21 and, and other uh, resolutions are this to just really control the planet. And these people will do it. Vaccinations. Bill Gates is set. He's like the mad scientist through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Even Ebola was started. And you can fact check me. I did a very big show on this in my Sunday night with Scott Binsack uh, show production. The link is above, below this video, wherever it may show up. Uh, about Ebola and where it started and that, you know, we own the patent and this was Bill and Melinda Gates and Bill Gates talks openly about it as well. There's a TED talk, you know, I believe the planet should be the biggest problem and it is, I will be honest, one of our, not one of, the biggest problem on this planet is not just the madmen that try to play God, but that of population because the planet cannot sustain after X amount of time continued growth and thus have the natural resources to, to sustain it. In their minds, they want to control this, and they don't care if they wipe out half the planet to do it. Uh, they'll be safe. <laughs> Trust me, they'll be safe, and we will not. And it is, the good thing is, is that people are truly awakening to this, and although some may be called crazy, some may be tinfoil hat and it's a conspiracy, they're fools, because the evidence is the, I'm a realist. I look at facts. I look at, you know, and that's why I hate fake media or stupid news stories that try to claim that this and this and this, and they exaggerate. They lie, and you can't even trust shit from the media anymore, except for a very select few and, and international news sources that are non-biased. Fox is okay, like Sean Hannity and, and you know, Judge Janine, uh, uh, you know, others, you know, but... Uh, as far as a mainstream good source of good international and national news, there's not many left. And that's the way they want it. Bottom line is that our weapons have already made its way to these jihadists. Now you're seeing a, an upturn in the, the lethal destruction of the weapons that they are going to be receiving and thus that of surface to air missiles which are state of the art just like they are been have been given state of the art anti tank missiles which was helping them win against Syria because they were using US weapons and we say no how did they get it how did they get those brand new Humvees how did they get those anti tank missiles Saudi Arabia and you can check this out Saudi Arabia has bought, by the thousands, these anti-tank missiles. They are then shipped directly to ISIS, 
and other jihadist groups against Bashar al-Assad, and this is where they are used. They are even used against Turkey. However, Turkey has its own jihadists working with these other groups, all being run by the CIA. Fact. The bottom line is that all of this is designed to, to disrupt our nuclear peace with Russia. I'm, I'm telling you this. And they wanted to trigger off a major war with Russia. And just like you as Americans, or we as Americans are praying that Donald Trump gets sworn in on the 20th and that we can get this madman out of there, I can assure you other countries and Putin himself are looking for the same because, and as I said, you still have floating out there. The other night I said this to you, don't remember, there's still a report that is due on Obama's desk before he leaves from the CIA and other intelligence communities having to do with the Russians interfering with the American election. And I can guarantee you there'll be doctored evidence in there alleging that Russia did in fact interfere with our, our, our elections and did they're going to claim that it persuaded the American people to vote for Donald Trump as well as hurt Hillary Clinton, as they already have, but you're going to see more of it, a more, more exact uh, stating of it and showing it by X, Y, and Z that is fabricated. Russia had nothing to do with interfering with our elections, and Obama is going to say, even though he said uh, we have no evidence that you know Russia actually affected the vote, he will say, based on the new report, well, wait a minute, on this new report information that we have, it does seem like they did X, Y, and Z. And he does have the power to turn around and say, we want new, we, we want new elections. We want new elections. And it can happen. It happens in Europe a lot, in third world countries, to where they start and say, we want a new, you know, we need to re-vote, blah, blah, blah. Don't put it past him. Look at what he's done already. Look what he just did to Israel. The man is now being told to carry out his terroristic acts, and he's doing it. Think about the behavior and what he has done. What he has done already. I want you all as Americans, whether you're Democratic, Republic, Independents, to really think about what this president has done to date to put America in harm's way all over the globe, as well as how much of a destructive path that he, and even while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, they have been to other countries to the point where China does not even pull up the ramp of steps to Air Force One when it lands there. And I want to get into this China situation. The Pentagon, and I'll say the White House and the Pentagon, as well as they're using the mainstream media to make it look like to you and to us and to the world that China is doing something new with the South China Sea, okay? Like, you know, they built these man-made islands. They're now moving missile systems to them. They now just bought an aircraft carrier into, you know, through the street, you know, off Taiwan, blah, 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 stealth fighters, do, 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 do. Listen, this is nothing... <laughs> Their aircraft carrier, their jets, they're nothing compared to what we have or what Russia has or the like. Okay? They may have a very large army of men and women, people, but this is nothing new for China to do what it is doing. It is not a, uh, what it's being turned into. It's a distraction, actually, because China needs us more than we need China. Trust what I tell you. And this is, China has never, ever not said about that, that their desire to occupy the South China Sea and that it, this is their territory. They have never said that, you know, uh, they've made this very open and very clear to the world on numerous occasions that this is what they planned on doing and that, they, that this is their territory. They want to seize this. They want to do this. So this is really nothing new. So don't alarm yourself that you think that China is going to turn around and start a war. If anything, we're using what China is doing as a, dis as a distraction to really what's going on because China is, is really not doing anything out of its, out of what it already planned to do. And 
these islands that have been man-made and whatever. Listen, let China, what, what, what are they going to do? Okay, China really. One of their aircraft carriers could be taken out by one of our missiles in 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 you know ship to ship or, or you know what are our subs in two seconds. All right, this is this. You're not dealing with uh, a country that has a, this massive navy or above and and of any significant significance to anyone. Point being though, is that China. We owe China. A lot of money okay China owes us a lot of money they also own a lot of our bonds but my point being is is that China is not going to war with the United States it would be cutting its own throat by doing it and they know it so do not allow this big China story and all this crap to to persuade you or you know take your eye off the real ball that's happening while they are trying to enact World War three with Russia is China aware of this? Of course they are. Is China moving its pieces around to do, you know, to prepare itself in case there's a war between Russia and the United States? Yes. But it's not doing, I'm going to tell you what, China can load all those islands with all the missiles it wants. Uh, big deal. Big deal. <laughs> no disrespect, everybody. It, it's no big deal. Uh, is China a superpower as far as finances, having its own world bank? And other things, yes, that's what you need to pay attention to. China's opened its own world bank. Back, it is the first world bank ever to back its currency by gold. It's certificated money, and this is the real big problem. This is what's going to disrupt the dollar, world finance, and you're going to see serious matters that have already happened because many countries are moving their banking to the Chinese world bank. France, I mean, Kuwait, you could use a lot of countries are, including ourselves, just so you all know. The United States is actually banking with the Bank of China, the new World Bank of China. This is the, what's really upsetting the powers that be from the Rothschild family to Rockefeller to J.P. Morgan Chase because the IMF, the World Bank, their World Bank does not. It's based on fiat cash, i.e. printed money that's just worth zero. So China, by opening a world bank backed by gold, because all these years while we weren't paying attention, China has been buying up, along with Russia, all the gold on the planet and, and stalking it away, including that of China buying all across the world any natural resource area that produces gold, titanium, all the mineral right, anything mineral, China has been buying up across the globe, including that of diamond areas, you know, diamond mines, gold mines, strip mines all across the globe. Research what I'm telling you. By the droves. By the drove. By the droves. That's the big thing. And this bank and what they're doing, and it has nothing to do with their military, trust me. This has to do with controlling the world financial market. That's what China's really after. Okay? China's not looking to, to, to do go to war with anybody. Is it building its military? Yes. Wonderful. But it's it, it it would be against it would be shooting itself in the head to attempt to go to war with the United States, okay, or even any other country uh, of the like. So and they're not in the position that Russia's being backed into like Putin is as we speak. Nor would we do that to China because we know the ramifications thereof because China is, like I said, one of the biggest gross producers of, do we need to get our jobs back and manufacturing back from China? Yes. Fact. Are they concerned about that? Yes. However, China through this new world bank will be able to sustain itself as a country and control what the Rothschilds now control, and this is what these families are very concerned about. Then you will see, and they will do something to try to take out China from this financial market. Trust what I tell you. And that's in the, that's in the horizon coming, because they can, will not allow it. They will not allow it. Once you see the petrodollar start to be traded, uh, petro uh, exchange, okay? OPEC being traded not in the US dollar, then you need to panic. That's the trigger point of what you'll see when you will start to see world financial collapse. And Gaddafi was one of those men who stepped forward from Libya to start printing money 
gold certificated money. Google what I'm telling you. He's even holding it up and bragging about it because Gaddafi was also one who was stockpiling gold. And after we invaded and just destroyed Libya, we also stole that gold. Don't kid yourself. And we stopped Gaddafi from trading oil in his own his own. He stopped trading oil with the his plans were to stop trading oil on using the U.S. dollar, and this would upset OPEC completely and the U.S. dollar itself. Because, which a lot of Americans don't understand, our money is worthless. It is worthless. It is the Federal Reserve that keeps it by in, in, uh, interest rates and other and things of the like. We live on a debt society, not a, you know. Give credit, give credit. Banks borrow upon debt. They were never used to be allowed to do that. Now they borrow against debt, and there's nothing to back it. There's only maybe $278 billion, roughly, of real currency in circulation, but yet there's trillions and trillions that are out there to be lent and spent in hyperspace. These are the bigger things that you need to be wor the world needs to be worrying about because this is where you're going to see uh, the reset of the dollar and the reset of world finance. So, We are having serious aggression against, i.e., Russia and the UN, i.e., NATO. And this is why you see Russia acting the way it is and boosting up its nuclear arsenal and making that statement and moving chess pieces, military pieces on a chessboard to protect itself and even having its citizens do nuclear drills because you're dealing with madmen. And to them, they are about to lose it all, and they see Trump coming. And Trump is is anti, you know, <laughs> anti UN, anti globalist, anti all the above. And I believe Obama is, as I you just saw this horrible act with the UN against Israel, by by the U.S. Excuse me, using the UN against Israel. He is truly showing his hands, and now under this 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 act uh, that he has enacted, he will be. We are arming ISIS now and other groups with much more serious weapons, and thus that of the anti you know surface to air missiles, and you will see this aggression ramp up and then be blamed. ISIS did it to Russia, and Russia already knows who backs ISIS, and Putin's come out to the world and told him. And just think about the international incident that that will create. And it really is, it's, it's beyond a proxy war now. Proxy war, as I explained to you, is us giving weapons to ISIS and the other factions that are, are jihadist groups that are in Syria using our money and our weapons to fight against Bashar al-Assad and Russian troops and Iranian troops. So in that, that proxy is really us in a war with Russia because Russia's trying to help them and we're trying to, and we're feeding them. So it's not like, okay, our soldiers are on the ground and Russian soldiers are on the ground, but our weapons are being there and our money is there and our support is there to back these other groups against Russia and Syria and Iran, and thus we really are at war, what they call a proxy war with uh, Russia, Iran, and the like. And this has been going on for some time, and now I'm telling you they are ramping it up. And they, I, you'll probably see an incident before he leaves office. God, hopefully, he, we do not. But he, everything that he's showing, and if they do come out with what I've been told and what's been said, that he is going to propose Palestine become an independent state to the UN, and the UN needs to go. That's my other point. We need to stop funding the UN, and now that is something I believe MFA will create a true petition and true page to go after from for all U.S. citizens. It doesn't matter who you are, what race, religion, political group, it does not matter. You should be backing this to stop funding the UN because it is a group of countries, a majority of them, that are 
very anti-democratic, that are very, you know, <laughs> and they're using, and we're, we're paying for it. We are paying for this, and they really do nothing. They're doing nothing. As Obama, excuse me, as Trump has said, it's, you know, it's a group of good old boys club, and they're doing nothing. And the UN is dangerous because it enacts UN resolutions that control the world and these countries, just like it did in Israel, telling them to stop building and blah, blah, blah. And now Israel is saying this and saying, listen, we're going to keep building. Now you're going to trigger into to Palestine to make a motion to the UN saying they're in, in violation of this new resolution, and now you're going to have UN possible UN troops getting involved to stop Israel, and now you have a serious war on your hands. And, you know, this goes back to biblical teachings. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be straight with you all. <laughs> if you start looking at this stuff and you start putting it all together, this is like prophesied stuff here at, at the end of the game. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, I, I, you know, <laughs> I'm not a, listen, I'm a very religious, spiritual person, and, and but... It takes me a lot to say, wait, this is really looks like this is, you know, coming to light by all the signs and things that are taking place to where you could even say Obama's the Antichrist for for for, for goodness sake. I mean, for real. <laughs> for real. Because his actions are clearly showing that nothing less, that the man is straight evil, that the man has not America's good interests at heart, that he does not have Christians' good interests at heart, and or Jews' good interests at heart, he has, or even that of, of, of true Muslims at heart. He, he is, you know, uh, uh, this is, you know, it's just mind-blowing, but it's real. It's mind-blowing, and that's what they hope. Excuse me. That's what they hope. They hope people will go, nah, that's impossible. Nah, that won't happen. Nah, don't worry about that. It's going to be okay. Nah, nah, nah. No. I'm telling you, when you see <laughs> Israel getting ready to do what it's about to do and say, listen, stop with us, and you know what? <laughs> what you did is just broken uh, history a history of good, real relations, and it was already bad enough, Obama's relationships with Israel up to this point. This was just a complete final smack in the face. Washington is very good at denying what it does. If you notice its own press brief, you know, press briefings and all the about. No, 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 no. We had nothing to do with the UN <laughs> resolution and what we, we vetoed. You know, we didn't veto, excuse me. What, what, we had nothing to do with it. Uh, no, not. Pack your shit. All of you need to pack your shit and move out of Washington like now. And I'm telling you, they don't want to leave. They don't want to leave. Obama is super upset that his, and this was more about his legacy. If you hear his own words, I am, the reason why he was campaigning for Hillary Clinton was not because he likes Hillary Clinton, because really underneath that, he thinks she's a, she's a real piece of shit too, trust me. Because he's just as bad, or wor he's actually worse, to be honest with you. He's the true cell. He's the true Trojan horse. Hillary, she's just, you know, we all know she lies. We all know she's a murderer. We all know she doesn't care about the United States. We all know she's out for herself. We all know she's a narcissist. But Obama? Nah. No, no, no. And he, he outright comes and just look at this situation with the election. He was making fun of Donald Trump, saying that Donald Trump was saying the system was rigged and told him to listen, go out there and worry about getting your own votes. Don't worry about a democratic system that there's nothing wrong with, okay? There's no reports of any voter fraud. Now, it's a complete opposite because they got the pants beat off of them. They can't figure out how that happened. Now they want to blame it on Russia and make up these stories that are just absurd. This shows you, and America, you need to realize what I'm saying to you. You're talking about the most powerful, powerful, intelligence agencies, groups, or branches in the world, okay? Coming out and saying that Russia interfered with our elections 
and as well hacked the DNC when in fact that's just 1,000% wrong. So if they're following along with this man in this absurd, fake, false flag story, what does that tell you? This should concern you because they're lying. When they, this is a saying, when you're going to lie, you lie big. Okay, This is a big lie. This is probably the greatest fraud ever perpetrated on the American people, besides the Clintons. Okay, This is the, the biggest. And you're seeing our own intelligence agencies. This should make you worry that our own intelligence agencies are backing this madman. And thus backing Hillary Clinton and her stories of that, of, you know, Russia did it, 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 Russia did it. And the FBI originally said Russia did nothing, then Comey folded once again and said, you know what, we find that, you know, Russia did interfere. And as America stands by and just goes, hmm, well, yeah, well, what's going on here? You know, uh, no, how about America needs to stand up and say, whoa, wait a second, we're not going to take this anymore. Enough is enough. Enough of the bullshit, enough of your lies, enough of your corruption. You're now, you're now putting America in a very serious place and putting a bullseye right on its back and thus all of its citizens and thus all of its military from other countries that you are keep messing with and blaming because of your own sick needs and greed and power get grab that's what the american people are missing here european countries see it because they're outside the box looking in and i talk to them on a regular basis from israel and i have a very good close connection than anybody who was at our december rally knows i had israeli tv there the biggest cheese channel there i've been met with all those reporters i have just even i could uh, i mean i have a handful of business cards to that are just from israel uh TV, and radio, etc. Because outside of here, MFA has an incredible reputation outside this country and for being, for what we have done and what we're doing in other countries support us, meaning people from these countries support us and as well as me. And they even have looked at some of these old stories about, and they're like, for real? These are good journalists now. I'm talking about, you know, Pulitzer Prize award winning good journalists. And actually, two of them are helping me uh, with because my book is coming out and I want an investigative journalist to take all the evidence I have and expose the corruption that I went through on a mass scale. I mean, a mass scale. I want to expose it, and I will, more so than I've ever done. And there is a website being created for that, okay? Uh, because all I need to do is show the proof of what happened to me, and I want my name cleared. I'm going after my name cleared with asking Donald Trump, presenting him the evidence to wipe this stupid misdemeanor bullshit out from years ago and stop this madness once and for all because we have the evidence and I'm done. I'm done playing around and it's all going public. I, I've had enough. Along with the book and I have agreed to the movie and that's it. And now I'm going to say again what's happening at the haters. Above here is a link. It's not active yet, but it's at mfahaters.com. You will be able to go to that site within days, and you're going to see a very interesting story. And you're going to see very interesting individuals with their pictures, their bios, their backgrounds, everything about them. And as I said, people in glass houses should not throw stones, okay? I'm a very open person. You can see I've got nothing to hide, nor do I want to. That's the difference. I don't want to hide anything. Here, take, I don't care a shit. Point being, why is this select group of people, and it is a select group of people trying to stop MFA and myself from something that is ancient and actually not even accurate at all to the facts and the truth, not even close, coming after MFA, what is wrong with these people? What is why they are so obsessed with me? And it's it's a handful, okay? And everyone is going to be exposed. All their fake names on Facebook mean nothing because we have all their real names, we have all their locations, we have everything. And we are legally and publicly going to do it since they attacked me and they attacked MFA. I have that legal right to do the same. However, ours is going to be very, very accurate and show you what has happened and who has headed this and who is behind this. Hence the new.com. 
and that will be solved. You will also see the list then so you all know on your friends list to check these people because these people are not well. And you, many of you who have come to me and showed me what they have done have said, what is this? These people are crazy. These people are crazy. You should see their wall. You should see their stuff. They should see this. You should see that. They even have my x-rays on there from my face from my near fatal auto accident embarrassing themselves. Okay? They actually stole from my site, copyrighted trademark site, my my own 3D CAT scans. I don't know what they're trying to gain by that, but it does show what I've always said. <laughs> I was in a near fatal auto accident and freaking died and they put my head back together and you can see all the plates, you can see all the, you know, hundreds of screws, you can see all the fractures, you can see it all. <laughs> you can see the trach, <laughs> you can see it all. So I don't know what, the, it just shows how sick they are. And I've gotten hundreds of messages, not, not, not one, not ten, hundreds of messages of people coming to me saying, look at how sick this is, look at how this is. And authorities have looked at their walls. This is, the, like I said, I'm not a person, I'm, I'm stopping now, I'm just going to show you. The link is above, pay attention to it, I will let you know when it's live. And in the underground, anybody in the underground will be shown much more. Because I have had it. You've seen me, I've done this, I've let this go on for a couple of months now. And it goes for the same thing with clients, with me, that ex these few clients that have decided to join in this group after I took very good care of them, they're going to embarrass themselves because when you have thousands of messages from clients that say how much they love what we've done for them, how much the work has been done, how beautiful their websites and their brands are, and all of a sudden they decide, oh, wait, oh, oh whoa, this isn't right, oh, wait, boop. Oh. Uh, and there's another motive behind it, guess what? That's fair game. End of story. And there's only, and they all got on this gossip trail. Here's the problem. This is the same thing you saw them try to do and do to Donald Trump on a regular basis. They think, and this is what fuels this, drama. People feed into drama and BS and bad newspaper. I'm just using an example. I mean, nothing current about myself. I'm using this as an entire example of what people do. Bad media from the New York Times, especially and above CNN and that, they'll put a story out there. And then they see who latches onto it, and they'll keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. And this is the same thing that haters do, even against Trump, and the libs did against the Donald Trump, the liberals. Put it out there. He raped this girl. 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 So that all you see is that he, you know, raped this girl, and or he touched Miss America's ass, or some BS story that somebody threw her some of Miss Finland's Miss Finland's ass. Okay, let's just give you that one. Right away. Oh my God, Donald Trump touched Miss Finland's ass and they feed it and they feed it and they see these people jump on this bandwagon okay because they are idiots they have no common sense and they believe right away oh my god it's got to be true Donald Trump has to touch Miss Finland's ass that makes him a bad guy and a sexual predator blah 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 when in fact the whole story is bullshit it's complete BS and that's where you see our entire media system wrecking people's lives on a regular basis because, and you know whose fault it is? It's not the media's fault. It's America's fault, meaning the people that feed into it, not everyone, but the people who do feed into it because they don't have the common sense to say, wait a second, is this really true or is this not true? Can this be true? So people actually believe just because it's on Google or shows up in the New York Times, who used to, I would have said to you 10 years ago, Ten years ago, I would have said, you know, if this showed up in the New York Times, trust it. Now, I wouldn't believe anything that comes out of their out of their newspaper, as of most people in the world do not, and they don't even follow or read the New York Times, with the exception of the liberal base that they have, and that's not going to let them survive. Hence, why they are getting rid of X amount of floors of their own building and shutting them down to to consolidate because they are failing. As Donald Trump tells you, believe me, they are failing. Everybody today in these people's mind is a con or a fraud or anything like, but yet these are the people that hide behind their bullshit. These are the people that are not public. These are the people that, you know, have real stories that they don't want to show and real skeletons they don't want to bring out. And they want to make it that, you know, let's go out on the, and they must have really have a lot of time on their hands. And I'm probably sure they're food stamp recipients and or the like or the above because, and this is nothing against people who truly need food stamps, this is against people who, I can tell you, have nothing better to do and probably have taken advantage of the system, and I'm saying that because I have certain information on certain people in these Haiti group, and I'll leave it at that. You will see it on this new website. Point being, it all ties, ties together to what I'm trying to tell you all. 
This entire election, they thought that America was going to be stupid enough, that all a majority of America would be stupid enough to play along with this media, fake media bullshit. And you know what? It didn't work. They threw everything that they had at the American people and the world about Donald Trump and the good people that are on here and the, the 62 million plus that voted for Donald Trump said, wait, no, uh-uh. Even if, you know, we'll just say, and Donald Trump admitted it, he said some words in a, in, a, in, a, in a dressing room that I'll tell you what, I've gotten over a thousand messages, a thousand messages about that incident at the time where women, who were from, mostly from women, who said, you know what, Scott, I say worse, or I've done worse, or heard worse, or whatever, and it's just talk, it's BS, and whatever. That doesn't make him a bad, you know, to, uh, everybody's human, I mean, men are men, women are women, shit happens, okay? When... And he admitted it. He came right out and said, listen, I said it. I said it. You ever seen Hillary Clinton ever come out and say, you know what? I did that. I'm sorry for that. No, that man came right out and said, I'm sorry. I did it just like I would. If I did something wrong, I'm telling you, I'll tell you, sorry. I did it. I'd rather, you know, uh, this is it. This is the, this is the point. And as I said with Agenda 21 last night, they want to use, and this is part of their, their ideas, to use the media and the six to seven major, major media companies, corporations that are tied to these major backed, uh, the families and, and the like, to gut Americans information source and destroy it so that people feed into this. And now I'll give you an example. This mall incident. Do you see this major incident that's popped off with kids all across malls across America? If you think that that was some kind of coincidence that just popped off but some gang leaders are like, you're wrong. Because information coming in, not just to us, but to, I mean, to mainstream top news sources as well as to us from the underground and other places, clearly show this was an incident that was strung out for the Internet and placed in using social media to string it along and, get in, and encourage kids to go out and start uh, major violent fights and others at malls across America. So now what happens? The latest thing in the news. We need bigger police presence in the malls. It's not safe to go shopping. It's not safe to go in the malls. Look at what's happening here. Do you see it? The whole incident, the entire thing, yes, was it wrong, was it violent, etc., but it was all staged. It was all, meaning, concocted to make America feel live in fear. Let's bring more police on. Let's destabilize this country. And now what it's also attacking, get ready, it's attacking social media. So we need to police social media more than we normally do. So now we have the fake news issue that they're already done and everybody's being censored. So now you're going to just watch what I'm telling you, watch what comes out of this. They're gonna blame this, which they should. Social media was the person, was the point, but it's not social media's fault. It's the kids and those and the parents of these kids and or if they're adult men, women, whatever, it's their own fault. They fed into this and this is what they do. It's the same thing they did with the riots. They paid certain they paid certain, they advertise on Craigslist, they pay certain people through George Soros and Black Lives Matter. They get the word out. The youth and the millennials, a lot of them jump right on the bandwagon and go, oh my God, this is a cause. I need to be a part of something. I need to be this and this because most of them have grown up in broken homes, serious families, have serious issues themselves, and they want to be a part of something. They want to be a part of something better. So, and a lot of them have a lot of anger and hate inside of them across this country. As you can see, there's hate everywhere. So they're using this hate that has already been created by the system itself, like under Agenda 21, to strip and gut America of its normal morals and values to end up with this. It's like a, a nuclear explosion ready to go off at any time in our country vi via our own citizens because that's what they want. They want it to be a, like this. Okay, and they've already got them programmed to follow like this. Let's follow the leader. So what do they do with the riot, with this protests and riots? They pay a few. And then the few, and they put all this money behind marketing it on social media all over and on Craigslist and the like. And then people, the followers, jump right in behind them. And then you have, boom, this massive riots across the country, just like you just saw this mall explosion. And there'll be many much more coming. This is not going to stop. So 
this is how they use they use the people against themselves they're using Americans against Americans and that's the point that and that's the issue that needs to be stopped Americans need to stop allowing mainstream media tied thus to the powers that be from manipulating them and using it's like psychological warfare it really is and they're using these tactics and they're, they're open about these tactics if you look at agenda 21 and read the fine print as I explained to you this is it just the same thing is they want to take away they keep passing more laws and more laws about making more federal land and they keep stripping private citizens of their fed of their land claiming it's federal Bundy Ranch is a big example of that but that goes into more stuff with uranium one and the Clintons and other things as well but it's just another example and what the Bundy suffered was horrible. It's a story I'm going to be covering, and I'm actually looking to interview some of the Bundys as well on my new show platform, so get ready. We have a lot coming from MFA, and the more we're raising money, the more we're building this, and the more volunteers, and the more, you know, I mean, this, we're growing, and you're going to get more information and more accurate information as well as uh, a bigger presence of MFA. And we can beat social media. We can beat these platforms. We can beat them all. Trust me. Trust me. And it just perturbs me because all people really need to do is open their eyes, take the time before you pass judgment or see something or read something and think that it's true to do your own homework and or use your own gut. Use your own instincts. Use your own what's real is real and what's not is not. And ask yourself, why is only a select people doing something? Or why is Obama doing something? Listen to what they say. Look at their actions. And if you're an Obama supporter and you see this, really open your eyes. Open your eyes because his actions are showing it all. He is not, he's anti-American. And I will say this. I'm sorry to say I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it again. He is the cell, he is the horse, he is the man behind the mask. This has been the, the, the sleeper cell himself that has been embedded in our country as our own president and America allowed it to happen. And now America is suffering from the results thereof. And get ready because he's, the, and so, is, so are countries around the world suffering from this. He has used America for his own personal use via that of the globalist to use our military, to use our tax dollars, to use our hard work, to use our, you know, our energy, our, our everything. He has sucked it dry for the bigger agenda. And now he's made us right on the, right on the, 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 the borderline of World War III, as well as disrespected by many countries internationally our, 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 we're over a trillion dollars in change, you know, our, 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 our budget is through the roof, our military is depleted, our borders are wide open, our school systems are beyond, you know, they, 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 our children are being fed BS every day. This is where you've been left. This is what his, this has been the end result in game and he's not done yet. And Israel's just a good showing of that and what he did. And he walks around like, hey, you know, he's in Hawaii with the Japanese prime minister. You know, hey, yo, hey, don't. We'll throw a wreath on, you know, for, you know, the veterans of Pearl Harbor and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. Notice he's always on vacation when the serious shit happens, right? After he spent, I think, while he's in office, I don't know how many millions and millions and millions of dollars on Obama's vacations all over the planet. Not that our presidents, listen, you got a good president, let him take his vacation with his family. He respectfully deserves that as commander in chief. But this man exploited it. This man exploited it. You have a president now coming in who doesn't even want to be paid. He doesn't even want to be paid. He can't even take the money and give it to somebody he wants to because that's against the rules. His son can't even keep his, his non-for-profit charitable, major good charity to help other people because his father is becoming president. I mean, there's some rules in our country because people are like, what? Everybody knew, and I'm sure all the Americans that voted for Donald Trump would say one thing. You know what? We knew he was already rich. 
We knew he was already owned many multi-businesses. We knew, you know, his children were involved in many, many causes, many things, you know, etc. We don't care. We don't care. We just want him as a president, and it's part of the things we respect about him and his good family. Got it. We don't have a problem with that. But you see, the liberals and others have a problem with that to the point where I'm telling you now, they're going to try, and that's why you see Trump doing all these things. He's trying to get rid of his his his, his own foundation. His children are giving up their foundations. This family has given up. And guess, here's the point. And this is what the haters of Donald Trump don't get. He didn't have to do this. He was a, he's a billionaire. He's already made it. He's already, you know, he's fallen down. He's gotten back up. He's made it. He knows this. He's done this. He's done that. He's already made it. And now his family's had to suffer, not just, let's listen, and if you say how, the man has to wake up every day and be bashed on the newspaper with false lies about, especially sexual, you know, sexual rapes, sexual assaults, you name it. Then his wife has to be constantly, their, their corporations online, their stuff, even his daughter, Ivanka's stuff on Amazon, you should see the comments, the horrible comments. I just showed you a GoFundMe camp, GoFundMe has allowed and I did the post under here because I'm about to unleash a legal whooping on GoFundMe. A whooping that you're, it will make the national news this case, trust me. Because GoFundMe allows people to create sites to get donations to assassinate Donald Trump. Okay? I create a fund for MFA for March for America for the first event we ever did. Tell them, listen, all I want is this fund. I will show you, we'll show the public. It says it right on it. And we did the expenditure sheet, the receipts, everything. And it came out to be $25,000 in change. We only raised $10,000 in something. Some of it came from T-shirt sales thereafter. Where'd the rest of the money come from? Me. And GoFundMe went through this horrible thing to try to shut this campaign down. And I knew it had to be anti-Trump. I knew it had to be anti-Trump because I'm like, so we started to investigate. And then funny enough, somebody sent me this article along with the stuff we've had. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, and look at this. They allow that, but they won't allow a good fund to, and it was for veterans. It was for whatever. We, we, the, the, with, the, with the fund to pay the expenses of this, the permits, lodging, food for people that came there, speakers, you know, put them up in hotels, everything. Point being. They even harassed us to the point where I'm going to make public all their emails to me. They harassed and harassed and harassed. It took, it took the donors themselves when I went live to go and smash GoFundMe and legal letters from myself to stop this with GoFundMe. But yet they don't remove sites or will allow sites that want to assassinate a man. What's wrong with this picture? And if people use GoFundMe knowing this from this point on and don't boycott GoFundMe, they could be allowing sites to go, you know, bully a kid. Let me raise money to go raise funds so I can do X, Y, and Z. These companies and these things are out of control and they need to be stopped. The ones that, that's dangerous. That spreads nothing but violence. If you think it's okay to start a fund to assassinate somebody, and you leave that up there, if I was CEO of that company, I would be, I would shut the doors myself based on my own staff allowing that to happen. I wouldn't say, I would come out and apologize to the world and say, you know what, I'm going to shut this, I'm telling you, I would shut the company down because the CEO and founder are the ones responsible for anybody of their employment and that allows such things. But then when you do the investigation into the found, the, the, the owners, ah, very liberal, very serious lo chillery lovers, connected to very serious, you know, situ other, other uh, backers, etc. So you see where it comes from. But then where's where is where is Google who wants to control the things that are on the internet and censor all this crap to even allow that? Like I brought up to you, why is ISIS and other terroristic groups allowed to have social media sites to begin with? It's the most up thing on the planet and they ask how do we stop this how do we stop isis how do we stop you know uh, global uh, terrorism 
What's the biggest propaganda? What's the biggest information source on the planet? The internet. Fact. Not the newspaper. Not even TV. Internet. What do you do? You shut down every YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, anything having to do with terrorism, period. And you shut them down. And guess what? Our government and other governments can do it like that. Just like that. Under our laws for terrorism, anti-terrorism laws. Listen, this is a simple process. So I ask you all, in your good conscience, to think about, and I'm saying this to your liberals as well, I want you to ask yourself why are terroristic jihadist groups permitted to remain on social media and or the internet, period? Because, is that freedom of speech? What? No, it's terrorism. They're spreading violence. They're spreading acute violence and madness and jihadism across the planet. But you see, that's what the founders of terrorism want. And you know who the founders are of ISIS and, 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 and the rest? We are. And the countries of the likes, the UK, our best friends, you know, Saudi Arabia, our best friends. We can go down the line. And it's truth. So ask yourself, why are they not shut, shut down? But then, when there's a terrorist attack, alleged ISIS-based, like the, they'll say the, the kid driving through Ohio State, well, what made this kid change? Well, we saw that he was on terroristic websites and that he was talking to people on the Internet. I'm using an example. Well, we saw the shooting in California. Well, if we would have vetted her and looked at her social media site, we would have known that she was, you know, uh, instead of worrying about fake news, you should be Facebook, hear this. Twitter, Google, hear this. Instead of worrying about this alleged fake news, which is another prop, nothing but propaganda and bullshit to shut and censor internet, how about you worry about the serious terrorism that is being broadcast across your sites across the globe and focus on that. You jumped up to, to do fake news stuff like in two seconds. Boop, 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 boop. Got to take this all down because they blame even Facebook, which is a total false story just as a cover, that Donald Facebook helped elect Donald Trump. It's a complete cover story. For Facebook to enact censorship on fake news, I'm telling you, factual, I, the evidence is there. Sources inside of Facebook tell me the same thing. It, it was, it's, it's entire fake. How about you go after and stop, stop the terrorism that and the violence that you're allowing to spread on, including that of hate sites, bullying sites, and the like. How about you attack those and you'll watch America and the world become a better place and you'll shut these, these groups down very fast because without them spreading their information to the world, you won't have to worry about a kid in Ohio going on the internet and looking at a website that might intrigue him and be like, oh, whoa, look at this. So I try to tell you, they're mealable. They feed into it. They see it. Oh, wait. I want, and they feel like they need to be a part of something. And here we go. And they count on that, believe me. Our CIA, our government, they count on it. And then they'll say, we have terrorist warnings and the high alert of blah, 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 and we heard of this and this and this. And then when you get to know the, 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 the alleged terrorist that did it, they come back. Well, if you looked at their Facebook or you looked at their Twitter or you looked at this and you looked at the information, they were researching or you look at their, their browser cache, you'll see that they were researching terrorists, how to make bombs, how to do this, how to do that. Do, do, do. Really? It would take 24 to 48 hours to sh clean the internet up of all this shit from all these different companies. Boom, 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 boom. And guess what? Terrorism on the internet would be gone. And thus, you would stop the spread of this madness, but they do not want to stop it. So that's why I say, ask yourself this question. Why are they permitted to have social media? You even have top Fox News. ISIS just claimed from their social media site that they take responsibility for this act. What? If I were to come on Facebook and say, by the way, I take responsibility for, you know, uh, shooting somebody in Times Square. Guess what? I'm done. I'm locked up. I'm shut off. I'll never be on there again. Have a nice day. So why are they not shutting off the main sources of this madness? Just ask yourself this question. It's a common sense answer. It's simple. 
And if you ever doubted that our country is behind, not behind this, that should answer yourself the question, why does Google, Facebook, Twitter, and the like, Instagram, allow terrorists to have sites? I have an emergency, everybody. I have to go. Somebody just called me here. It has to do with my family. I'm sorry. I have to cut this off right now. I love you guys, but I have to go. God bless.